<clears throat> hey, Auntie Babies. It's now 1.47 in the morning. I'm coming with part three of my prison stories. Yeah, you can see Auntie a little bit now. Uh, I just want to say me doing my stories kind of offend some people and you know the devil is really busy this is my life if I want to talk what happened to my life let me talk about what happened to me in my life this is my life I know what I went through I know what I had to deal with and I can't block this out and I'd rather to tell my own story didn't let anybody out there pull it up and write it for their story. Because everybody don't have a story to tell in life. You know, a person going to come at me yesterday, talking about you supposed to be funny. You need to keep, you need to keep being funny. I can do comedy on this YouTube channel and I can tell my story about my life. I could do more than one, you know, talk about more than one stuff. But if I had a cane to them and say, you supposed to be saved, you supposed to be Christian, you need to keep reading your Bible and leave me the elf alone, they would have got offended. If you supposed to be a Christian, you ain't even got no business over here on my YouTube channel bothering me. You go by what your little Christian friends run over there and tell you, then you want to come and attack me. But you should be opening up that Bible and be reading that Bible because Christians don't act like that. That's why a lot of y'all just play with God. And I sit back here and I talk to God every day. But that's beyond the point, Auntie Babies and Boogie Boogies. I had to get that off my chest. Because I'm tired of people trying to push me over as a pushover. I'm not a pushover. And I know what happened to me. No, I never did sell to an undercover. I left people in my house and they sold to this person after I told them not to. So many times I told them not to sell to that person. That's how I ended up getting two years damn house arrest. The worst thing I had to do, I hated house arrest. I was going to work for Academy School, trying to better myself, because I wanted to be a better person. But I was still selling drugs on house arrest. I would leave like one and two in the morning to go pick up a package, you know. One time I left, I had this girl to take me because I didn't want to drive my car because it got to the point where they was following me. They knew that I hadn't stopped. They was truly following me. They would just literally sit over my house. And the helicopter, <laughs> y'all probably said, no, Auntie, yes, it was just that bad. Sit over my house in the helicopter and watch me leave. And follow me all the way down to Fort Myers. Sure did. Many times. And um, I, I have to be back home at a certain time. So this, this person who had took me to Fort Myers this time, she had a flat tire. Matter of fact, she had two flat tires. I said, oh my God. I had to buy a tie. And then, as we was going, she had another flat tie. And she wanted to take me in her car. I said, girl, why you... I used to take me somewhere in this, this car. It keep breaking down like this. I don't know what the is going on. And I got all this stuff on me. So two white guys, they came along and they... Uh, Say, well, we can take you to the um, station to try to buy you a tie. 
I said, I got to get home. I got to get home. He said, what's wrong with you? You, you looking all anxious and stuff. I said, I don't supposed to be out the house. I said, I'm on house arrest. He said, you on house arrest? I said, yes. <laughs> and I'm out the house. And these two white guys, they say, well, how far you live from here? I say, about a couple hours. He said, well, get in. We'll take you. We'll take you to your door. I say, oh, you will? So I love, I think I left my friend like $200. I said, y'all get home. That, that's enough for y'all to get home. And she said, ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. And I left for something else, too, because, you know, they smoked. Most of these people were taking me down to these places. Most of them had, you know, habits, and they wanted to just try to make extra money and was smoking. And I left on her friend, on her boyfriend, $200. Because, you know... I had already paid for the tires and the stuff for them to get home. And they said, oh, thank you, thank you, love. This is, this is enough. So the white men, they took me all the way to my damn door. I got on like 6.30, 7 o'clock that morning. 7 o'clock that morning. And 30 minutes later, that damn probation officer was at my damn door. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, and I did pay the white guys. They didn't charge me for taking taking me home. I think I gave them like a hundred and twenty dollars. They didn't know what I had on me. They I ain't tell them nothing. They wasn't even suspecting to get nothing. They were volunteer. But they got me to my door. So about 30 minutes later, I get home, he bamming at my damn door. I had to pretend like I was asleep, just woke up. I messed my hair all up, went to the door, jumped in my night clothes. <laughs> and that's what y'all should have seen, Auntie. I went to that damn door talking about, yeah, who is it? Who is it? He said, this is your probation officer. This so-and-so, so-and-so. This your probation officer. I say, yeah. Yeah. He say, did I wake you up? I say, yeah, you woke me up. I was tired. Sleepy. Well, I just couldn't check up on you. I say, okay. I'll talk to you later. But I knew that man knew that I probably was lying because he probably had been watching my house all damn night. He probably seen when I left. He was a, he he was obsessed with his job, you know. They didn't up find him. He was obsessed with his job. And he knew that I was lying probably. But I played it off like I was the sleepiest, sleepiest person it would. <laughs> you know. I said, yeah, he said, all right, all right, Miss Brown, you uh, get up and do what you need, do what you're going to school today. I say, yes, I'm finna to get on up and take a shower before I get ready and go to school. <laughs> yes, and I still went to school. I went to uh, uh, academy because the academy was about an hour away. I have to drive every day about an hour away. Took my black ass to school like nothing had happened. And kept going on, you know what, sneaking out the house. Going all the way down there to Fort Myers. I ain't never stay in the house. So it's a couple times I took those trips. Down there. And one of the times I had took, I got one of my other friends with me. Mm-hmm. See, when people thought I was talking about them the other day, I was talking about another person that who is half passed on the glory. And I'm not going to mention their name, but they gone on the glory. And she used to go pick up for me. 
because she said, you know, it's too, she used to take my driver license and go pick up the stuff for me. So this is what happened one day. I was coming home from school. You know, I had them came home from school. I had them made a trip to Fort Myers, but I usually try to take the stuff with me because I didn't want to leave it in the house because I've been there, got rid of it, most of it, went out, um, go down there and pick it up because I was selling to like other drug dealers. But what I have left, I'll wrap it up in some tissue and take it with me in case I see somebody want to, you know, purchase something or something like that because that stuff was so strong you had to wrap it up in a lot of tissue. You used to eat through the damn toilet paper. Don't put it in your titties because your whole titty will burn up. <laughs> yeah. So I put it in there and um and I used to wear a lot of makeup. You would never catch me without my makeup. I always wore fashion fair. Every day. For about over 20 years, I wore fashion fair makeup. Didn't want nobody to see me without my makeup because I always thought my makeup made me look so pretty. And I was addicted to it for like over 20 years. I don't even wear it no more at all now since I don't get older. And, um... And I was coming home from school, and I seen the police down the street. I say, damn, where the police coming from? Then I seen one on the corner. I say, damn, there go another one on the corner. As I go to my house, my whole house is surrounded by policemen. The whole goddamn house. I was living in a trailer, y'all. <laughs> yeah, my trailer was surrounded by police officers. I mean, oh my God, and my landlord, she was out there first thing she was saying, Loretta, I'm so glad you're home. I said, what's going on? They want me to let them in your house. And I told them, no, I have not got permission from you to let them in your house. And I wasn't gonna let them in your house. You okay, Loretta? I said, yes, I'm okay. She said, because if you need anything, you let me know, because I wasn't going to let them in your house. No, I was not going to let them in your house, and she didn't. So I'm going to end it here, and I'll come back with y'all next week with part four. Okay, Auntie Babies and Boogie Wiggies. I'm just... You know, she didn't let them in the house, and I'm glad she looked out for Auntie because she say they were trying to persuade her to let them in the house, and she would not. I mean, the house was surrounded by police officer. It, it was ridiculous. All these people for this one woman. I guess he finally, he thought he had did his job. He thought he had don't had me. He thought he had been following me and all this stuff. Because, you know, he took it too far. He took it from too far, and he was after me. And he had other clients that he could have been riding down, you know, seeing about and stuff. But he chose to harass me. This man was almost like stalkerish. And, you know, the only thing, I had left the stuff at the house. When I got up there to the door, I had left the stuff at the house. And the police was surrounded by my, surrounded my whole trailer. They was in the front, they was in the back. It was beyond ridiculous. But I'll come back with y'all and hit y'all with part four. I hope y'all enjoying these stories. Like and subscribe to Loretta Brown YouTube channel. Don't get nothing on you. Bye.